Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. So these days, uh, many people are against fossil fuels. We hear a lot about, you know, uh, reduce your carbon footprint and no more oil and no more fossil fuels and that sort of thing. I mean, even the name fossil fuels uh, makes them sound like old fashioned and like, you know, we should move on, right? So, but the question that I have to ask is, okay, well, what would happen if we just stopped using fossil fuels right now? Because everyone thinks, well, okay, yeah, you, you'd have a problem, like we'd have to go to all electric cars because you've got like gasoline and you've got diesel and this is the thing most people think of when they think of fossil fuels or oil. Um, obviously, uh, you have kind of a problem there because when you're ordering everything on Amazon and it's delivered by usually diesel-powered trucks 50,000 times a day, uh, you'd have to replace those with all electric vehicles. And I did another video on uh, why electric vehicles will never catch on 100% or rather why they can't right now. So the deal is no we can't just switch over to all electric cars because no matter what country you live in the power grid of that country would instantly collapse. Uh, you can watch that video after this one if you like. I'll put a link to that down in the description. But uh, in this video I want to focus specifically on fossil fuels. So what else is there besides like you know let's just replace all our cars with electric cars boom we're done. Is it that simple? Well in order to answer that question, first we have to figure out uh, exactly what fossil fuels are and how we use them. So let's go to our friend, the Wikipedia. Wikipedia says, quote, A fossil fuel is a hydrocarbon containing material formed naturally in the Earth's crust from the remains of dead plants and animals that is extracted and burned as a fuel. The main fossil fuels are coal, oil, and natural gas. Right, so what that means is basically you've got like animals and plants like living things and they die and they you know decompose in the ground and then they under like lots of heat and lots of pressure and lots of time uh, magically they become fossil fuels uh, specifically coal oil and gas now <laughs> You might think, right, but if we're extracting these and they have like an animal or plant origin, isn't that kind of green? Well, no, it's probably more like brown or black. And of course, most people would quite accurately say, right, it's the burning of the fossil fuels that creates the pollution. That's what makes them not green. Uh, but technically, uh, in a sense, they are green because they are very natural, at least according to the official theory as to how fossil fuels are formed. Okay, so before we move on, let's look at some simple facts about fossil fuels. When it comes to the total global energy consumption, total energy usage of all of planet Earth, 84% of that energy comes from fossil fuels. So obviously you have a big problem if you just turn off the taps tomorrow. And uh, in terms of electricity production, 64% of global electricity is made from fossil fuels. So again, uh, right, that's kind of problematic. As a primary fuel source, we can't just turn, turn the taps off. Um, well, let's say we could actually somehow make, say, solar and wind and other renewables uh, in a period of a few years. Let's say we could actually uh, somehow use those to generate enough energy to replace fossil fuels entirely. That's a very tall order, but let's just pretend that we could, okay? So... Uh, when we're talking about fossil fuels, as I mentioned, we're talking about coal, uh, oil, and gas. Now, coal is pretty simple. It's like, it, it's, you know, coal, oil, and gas is basically a solid, uh, a liquid, and a gas form of a uh, fossil fuel. So, right, coal is pretty simple. It, you got a chunk of coal, you mine it from the earth, you burn it, you're done. More or less, right? Um, gas is kind of equally simple. Apparently, in the olden days, uh, they found, like, uh, they had there there was gas you know and they when they're trying to find you know oil and, and stuff and coal and they'd have this gas so what they do is they'd actually just vent the gas and and burn it and just like they just basically wasted it uh, and then one day somebody had the bright idea they're like hey this is like a source of energy let's basically bottle it up and ship it and so of course nowadays many people you know your home is heated by natural gas electricity is produced from natural gas um, right LNG gas pipelines in the news a lot lately. Uh, but again, gas is pretty simple. It gets interesting when we come to oil. 
Now oil, I'm going to call it oil, but it's essentially crude oil. This is kind of the liquid form of, uh, you know, petroleum. Uh, it's the liquid form of fossil fuels. And of course, it's not that simple because, you know, when you, when you take the liquid out of the ground, sometimes it has bits of, of solids in it and blah, it's all complicated. But for the sake of this video, let's just, it's the liquid, let's just call it oil, right? You know, you have like an oil whale, you strike, you strike oil, black gold, and then you move to Beverly Hills, that kind of oil, right? Well, oil is particularly nifty because it turns out that you can refine it. In fact, you have to refine it if you want to make, say, you know, you take your oil out of the ground, you refine it, and you use a process known as distillation, uh, and you can produce things like um, gasoline, uh, diesel, um, Right. Now, distillation is a simple way to think about it is if you distill water. So uh, if you have a water distiller, you got like a, a, a container and you pour water in it. It has a heating element in the bottom uh, that you heat the water to the boiling point. And the water, the water, of course, has, it's not just pure water, right? That's why you're distilling it. So you've got the water. Then you've got like, say, minerals, which you might not want to get rid of because they might be good for you. You might also have like fertilizers and pesticides and, and toxic chemicals in the water supply. So you, you put this water in the distiller, you boil it, and the water molecules turn into steam and they evaporate and float up. And then they go through this coil, which has a cooling fan. And as the steam travels through the coil, it condenses back into pure water and then drips into your container. So by the time your distillation process is done, you've got a jug of, of relatively pure water and inside the container, the boiling chamber of the distiller, what you're left with is this usually brownish gunk, and that's like all the, the minerals and toxic crap and sludge that you don't want to drink in your water. That's, that's distillation, right? Kind of a similar process is done with oil. And so the end result of this is all kinds of interesting things. So when you distill oil, what you end up with is what are known as petrochemicals or petroleum distillates. Now, Petroleum distillates are used in absolutely everything. Uh, in terms of the chemicals that are produced from the refinement of oil, we have things such as synthetic rubber, dyes, detergents and surfactants. Detergents like, you know, a detergent is a cleaning thing like laundry detergent, right? Uh, different from, that's different from soap, chemically speaking. Then you have surfactants. Like if you look on a, uh, get a bottle of like your spray kitchen cleaner or something and look at the label, and on the ingredients, it will say like non-ionic surfactants. Like a surfactant is again kind of like a cleaning agent. Um, that's usually petro petroleum distillates, petrochemicals. Uh, also, from uh, oil refinement, we get polyurethanes, uh, many types of plastics, solvents, uh, epoxy resins, engine coolant, isopropyl alcohol, like you know, rubbing alcohol for like yeah. Uh, acetone. Acetone is fun. If you've ever super glued your fingers together, you use acetone, it'll break down the super glue so you can unglue your fingers. Acetone is also a very useful chemical for removing anything sticky. Uh, acetone, that, uh, that actually comes from fossil fuels. Uh, every kind of lubricant you can think of, basically, is a petroleum distillate. Uh, adhesives, sealants, and even fertilizer. <laughs> One of the primary components of fertilizer we actually get it from like refining fossil fuels. So if you don't have fossil fuels, you don't have fertilizer, you don't have mass food production, then you go hungry. That would be bad. So, okay, these are kind of like chemicals that we get from the, the process of distilling uh, essentially oil, uh, you know, petroleum distillates, you get chemicals, right? But from those chemicals, we create all kinds of useful materials that we use every day. In terms of materials, you have things like PVC pipes, like the plastic pump plumbing pipes in your house, right? Uh, also, uh, various types of plastic, including PET, which is used in all kinds of stuff. Also, ABS plastic is, comes from petroleum, right? Uh, ABS plastic is kind of a generic type of plastic that is used in literally everything you've ever bought, ever, for like decades now. Uh, ABS plastic is everywhere. So uh, without uh, fossil fuels, you have no ABS plastic, unless you can find some sort of replacement for some of the key ingredients, which of course is not very simple. Also, uh, materials that come from distilling petroleum, polycarbonate, that's a particularly hard type of uh, usually transparent plastic used in things like windscreens for motorcycles and fighter jets, and it's a very, very useful, very strong plastic. Butyl rubber, this one is fun. Have you bought a tool recently that has kind of like that soft rubber grip? 
That soft rubber is actually butyl rubber. That's what gives you the soft touch. Incidentally, just as a little aside here, you will discover that that butyl rubber will start to deteriorate after a few years and eventually you're going to want to throw that tool away and buy another one because every time you pick it up it's going to make your hands sticky. So butyl rubber, while it feels nice and seems very premium, it's actually kind of crap. But anyway, petroleum distillate. Uh, styrofoam, excellent insulator, you know, different kinds of like foam panels, squishy foam, rigid foam, insulation, padding, all kinds of stuff. That uh, uh, comes from petroleum too. Nylon and polyester. Synthetic fibers used in all kinds of things. Uh, various paints, varnishes, fiberglass comes from fossil fuels. Cosmetics, flavorings, fragrances, and even food additives. Many food additives come from the process of refining fossil fuels. Okay, well, so you get the chemicals and you have the materials, but when you think about all of that, then it kind of should start to dawn on you the, the problem that we have here if we just stop using fossil fuels uh, right now. So. Without fossil fuels, um, in addition to not having, say, PVC pipes, uh, we also have a problem because we don't have things like shoes. When you think of like a shoe, like a modern running shoe or trainer, athletic shoe, um, that's primarily like all synthetic materials. There's different types of foam, gel, rubber, squishy stuff, um, you know, synthetic uh, fabrics and stuff, mesh. Uh, most of that is synthetic and much of it comes from petroleum, right? Also, uh, um, a refrigerator. Uh, the refrigerator, you have the refrigerant, then you have like the, the metal pipes that you have to, you have to mine it and you have to form it into these pipes and you have to shape it and that requires all kinds of energy and you have to build the compressor and, and you have like electronics, which I'll get to in a minute. And then you have, of course, a lot of plastic in a modern refrigerator and you also have insulating foam to keep the stuff cool, right? So we would not have refrigerators, we wouldn't have freezers, Washing machines, same thing, lots of rubber in washing machines, lots of it's synthetic, lots of synthetic plastics, uh, many synthetic components inside a washing machine, plus you probably wouldn't have any detergent to use in the washing machine, which would be uh, not very good. A coffee maker, again, lots of plastics, uh, lots of energy to make it, even the glass, the glass coffee pot, where do you get the energy to like melt the glass down and right, that's kind of a problem. Uh, various types of furniture and mattresses, squishy foam material, for example, synthetic materials. Uh, your furniture is made with synthetic fibers and then coated in like DuPont Mega Max super stain resistant coating and everything. Yeah, much of that comes from petroleum distillates, fossil fuels. Uh, also pens, dyes. Many dyes come from fossil fuels, so you might not have pens anymore. And of course the plastic used to make the pens wouldn't have that anymore either. Eyeglasses. Not only the plastic in the frames, and okay, you got a few bits of metal, but like modern eyeglasses are plastic lenses, not glass, right? It's lightweight. So we wouldn't have glasses anymore. Toilets, wouldn't have toilets anymore. Camping equipment, um, you know, like nylon or other synthetic fibers, very thin, very light, waterproof, strong. No more camping equipment, no more camping gear. Uh, various types of clothing, synthetic fibers, polyester, chances are the clothing you're wearing right now is at least 40% polyester, possibly more. You've got polyester, nylon, spandex, Dacron, all these, you know, most of these synthetic fibers um, come from uh, refining petroleum in, in at least part of the process involves petroleum distillates, which you don't have if you don't have fossil fuels. Uh, umbrellas, again, kind of like Kind of like, you know, camping gear, uh, tools, we've already gone over the, you know, the soft grip of your tool, but, you know, how do you, how do you refine steel? You need a lot of heat to melt steel down and form it into things, and, but, and of course some tools are more complicated, it's not just a hunk of steel and plastic and rubber, uh, you need, you need petroleum to make them. iPhones, uh, your iPhone is a kind of tour de force of different types of plastics and materials, um, the electronics boards inside. Uh, that requires a lot of chemicals, which come from oil. Um, even the lithography process that makes micro microprocessors and like chips and stuff, uh, a lot of those chemicals come from, yay, refining petroleum. So if you don't have the petroleum, you don't have any computer chips. 
Uh, you also don't have the phenomenal amount of energy required to mine the minerals and power like the huge mining trucks that are required for the raw materials, the raw minerals that go into making a microchip and all the little interconnects and the circuit boards and all that kind of stuff. To say nothing of the plastic, the Gorilla Glass screens and all that kind of stuff. So you can forget about your iPhone. You can also forget about, you know, like your GPS or uh, you can forget about your laptop because it's, it's the same thing. Like all super electronic -y devices are like very, very reliant on uh, fossil fuels for their production. Uh, yeah, so also we wouldn't have cars because when you think about all the components, especially synthetic components in a, a modern car, and forget about the engine computer. We've already established you wouldn't even have an engine computer. And of course, everything has a computer these days from cars to washing machines to fridges. It's all computerized. Uh, even like a cordless screwdriver is now uh, a brushless DC motor, which requires an electronic control board to actually make it go. So all of that would be gone. Uh, right. Medical equipment and medicines. This is one that most people really don't think of. When you think of not just, not just uh, medical equipment, but medicines. So in order to develop certain medications and drugs and stuff, a lot of that comes from petroleum distillates. Uh, the chemicals used to process things and test things and develop things, and then eventually the the, the production of the, the little pill or the the injection or whatever. And then, of course, if it's, say, like a, a vaccine, for example, well, you have to have a syringe to put it in. Okay, it might be plastic, it might be this. You, you have to have the, 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 the needle part. you got to, like, forge that somehow. And then, of course, you have to have sterile packaging, which is various types of plastics, right? Uh, and then, you know, medical equipment, it's the same thing. It's either highly electronic or there's lots of plastics and blah, blah, blah. And there's kind of double the amount of plastics because then you have to sterilize it all. You have to keep it sterile until it's taken into the surgery and blah, blah, blah. And so a lot of medical equipment and uh, medicines and medical supplies, forget about it. It doesn't exist anymore if you don't have fossil fuels. That's very problematic. Um, even, even things like the drapes hanging cover in the window in the room you're probably sitting in right now, like there, chances are they're a synthetic material. So no more drapes unless you want to, you know, like raise sheep and spin your own wool and like, you know, make them yourself. And, uh, food, food is another one people don't think of. You know, we had this, uh, this little thing where we're not allowed to buy energy from a certain country anymore. And I live uh, in the midst of a bunch of uh, farmers, and of course the farmers are a little bit upset because their, their f fuel prices have skyrocketed. But not only the fuel prices, because we're not allowed to buy fuel from a certain country, but the fertilizer prices have gone up because you're not allowed to buy fertilizer from that certain country. Which means here you have a bunch of farmers who, what normally what would happen is they would buy the fuel and buy the fertilizer from said country, and they would grow food. And then they would take that food that they grew and they would sell much of it back to the country that they bought the fuel from. So you have a two-way exchange, right? Okay, well, if you don't have fossil fuels anymore, you have not just high production costs and uh, no more profit, no more income, uh, but fossil fuels are used in uh, the creation of fertilizer. They're used in growing the food. How do you power all the heavy machinery? You have to build the machinery. You have to maintain the machinery. It all requires plastics and all the other materials and chemicals I mentioned. Uh, harvesting the food, again, very difficult. Processing the food. You need processing plants. They require energy. They require, you know, packaging, plastic packaging, blah, blah, blah. Shipping. You need fuel to get it from point A to point B in a refrigerated truck often, you know. So food is uh, in big trouble if we don't have fossil fuels anymore. Yeah, even, uh, it's even likely that the very chair that you're most likely sitting on to watch this video would not exist if it was not for fossil fuels. It goes even deeper than that, because even the building that you're sitting in right now probably wouldn't exist. I mean, uh, like concrete, for example. Concrete requires a lot of processing, uh, very high temperatures uh, to actually make it, chemicals, blah, blah, blah. That would not be possible without fossil fuels. Steel reinforced concrete is a big construction material. You wouldn't have steel either, as I mentioned a little while ago. Right, you have to refine the steel. That requires a phenomenal amount of energy. So what do you do without steel? What do you do without concrete? Um, you know, even lithium ion batteries and solar panels, oh, you know, we're all supposed to go green. Well, you know, do you have any idea like to mine lithium, like the amount of energy required and the size of the mining trucks and the, the energy expended just to extract that, 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 that raw lithium essentially. And then there's the whole refining process. 
And then there's like, you know, your, your lithium ion battery has some sort of like plastic casing usually, right? Guess what? That comes from petroleum products. <laughs> so what, what goes into making a solar panel? Well, a lot of energy and a lot of materials and some kind of like plastics. And again, it's kind of electronic. So you, again, you have petroleum distillates involved in the production of the solar panel so that you can go green. You need the fossil fuels to produce the new sources of energy so that you can be green. So the point is, if you just sit and kind of look around you right now and you look at everything and if you really think about it, you very quickly realize that it's not just about like replacing your diesel car with, with, a, with a Tesla and suddenly all your problems are going to be solved. Um, you, you wouldn't, that electric car could not be produced without fossil fuels right now. Um, you look around you and you look at any gizmo and all you see is plastics and you can, you know, to manufacture that thing, the chemicals required, the, the processes that went into manufacturing everything from laundry detergent to a washing machine to like a pen that you're writing with to the piece of paper you might be writing on or the tablet you're writing on with your plastic stylus, like all of that stuff is possible because of fossil fuels. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with going green. Uh, the idea, you know, reducing pollution and all that, like, that's a fantastic idea. But if you want to actually get there, it's not as simple as just saying, like, yeah, let's just turn off the taps and everybody go green. I mean, I, I made a video that I mentioned about uh, uh, why everyone can't switch over to an electric car. And a couple of weeks after I released that video, Elon Musk, of all people, came out and finally admitted, yeah, we can't all switch to electric cars right now because, um, yeah, it would, you know, the grids would collapse. and blah, blah. So, yeah, we really need to, like, do something about that. And then, you know, shortly thereafter, he just kind of like went off and, you know, then he bought Twitter and blah, 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 you know. And it's like, right, so if even the guy who's selling you the electric car has realized, right, we have a problem here, maybe this isn't really the future, let me go in this direction. Yeah, you should also probably be thinking twice about, you know, how we're actually going to do this. It's not that it isn't possible, it's that if you want to get from point A to point B, you have to kind of do it in a logical, reasonable way. You can't just ignore like 90% of reality and the 90% of reality that many people are ignoring is the fact that yes, fossil fuels are absolutely necessary for pretty much all the technology we use down to a level that most people have never even thought about. So yeah, if we want to get rid of them, awesome, but we're going to have to do it slowly and carefully and um, find substitutes for a whole lot of things. Or we're going to have to just go cold turkey and like live in grass huts and give up a lot of the, you know, comfortable lives that we've been leading until now because there's just no other way. So, right. That's the story on fossil fuels. For more ticket tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.